Hey everybody, Mike here. Now in this video, we're going to turn this plain old looking garage floor into a showroom like looking epoxy flake coating. So I'm going to just show you how we do that. Now what we did prior to this, prior to loop vacuuming the floor is we came in and we just lightly ground the floor with our hand grinders and that gets the concrete prepped to accept the epoxy. It opens up the pores, it, it helps clean any dirt and grease and grime off the floor, but most importantly, it keeps the floor dry. We never ever acid etch before we put an epoxy flake coating down. We don't want to introduce water into the floor, and then, so what happens is that water has to evaporate, and it comes out of the floor, and if you coat over that moisture, then that's just gonna blister the coating right off. So, you know, all these people and all these companies that tell you to acid etch your concrete before putting epoxy coating down, they're giving you bad information. Now we do this, we do these coatings for a living. We'll do 50 to 100 of them a year, year after year after year. So, I mean, the guys that do this for a living, none of us acid etch the concrete. We always grind the concrete to prep it for coating so i just wanted to throw that tidbit out there in case you were thinking about maybe doing this for yourself um, and if you need help doing it for yourself i also have a step-by-step -step course down in the description guys you can check that out where i break down every little step for you so you don't mess this up i mean this isn't something that you want to mess up you want to get it done right the first time you want it looking really really good and it's kind of easy to mess it up if you don't know all the steps. So I'm going to give you a pretty basic overview here in this video. And, and then you can just take it from there if you want. But So we grind the floor, we vacuum it, we clean it really, really good, get all the dust off it. And then we like to do what we call one-day floors. So we use, we use coatings in products that dry really, really fast. And that allows us as far as a business you know what doing this as a job to get in and out in a day so we could go do another one the next day um, and that's basically just because of the dry times the cure times on these coatings these ones these ones dry you know like in an hour and there's other ones that dry you know overnight it might you might put the coating down like this like the base coat and then you have to come back the next day and do the next process so um, the, pro the steps are about the same, it's just the only differences are the dry times and the products you use. And I cover all that stuff in, in the course, guys, if you're interested in that stuff. But So we had a little bit of trouble with the wind today trying to keep the leaves out of this thing too. So we're, we got our little leaf blower going as we're putting this base coat down. Now this base coat here also acts as the primer. So it's the primer and the base coat built into one. And that allows us to flake you know broadcast the flakes right into this first coating which is really really cool and then uh you can see how luke's luke's taking care of cutting in the edges rolling out the coating pretty much and then that allows me to go back and broadcast the flake right into the coating before it starts to to tack up at all and that's basically how we broadcast we just grab you know we fill our five gallon buckets up with the flake and then we just throw it up in the air and and let it settle down into the base coat. You really, we broadcast what we call to rejection, so we completely cover the base coat with the flake. I personally don't like just just throwing a few flakes up and and just trying to sporadically put the flakes in there. It's it's pretty difficult to get them even that way. You'll get you'll get bunches of flakes over here, then you won't have many over here, and when you're done, it just doesn't really look that good. So. We found that the best looking floors, we just completely broadcast the floor with the flake. We're using, obviously we're using a gray base coat on this one. We use gray for a lot of flakes. The gray looks really, really good. When you get all said and done and top coated and everything's finished, um, you might see maybe five to 10% of the base coat through the flake. So you, you do want to kind of use a base coat that's similar to some of the colors that are in the flake. This was, a, this was about a 24 by 20 garage, so almost 500 square feet, two guys. Really easy with two guys, especially if you have any experience at all. 
And that's kind of what the flake looks like as it goes down. You know, I throw that up, I let it completely cover that gray. And then if I do see any wet spots, you know, if I look back on it and I do see any kind of shiny or wet spots, I'll, I'll just throw some more flake up in there. And I'm wearing, I'm actually wearing baseball cleats on this job. Um, and that way I can walk right back into that base coat and it doesn't really, you know, obviously it doesn't leave footprints. And I can just walk through it if I need to and in and out of it and it doesn't bother anything. The key to, you know, the, the key to doing these floors is number one, knowing, knowing the, the pot life on the, the product you're using. Pot life is how much time you have to work with it, how much time you have in the bucket. And with most epoxies, most good epoxies, um, you don't really have much time to leave it in the bucket you know the the epoxy or the polyaspartic which is a another type of coating will start curing up in the bucket so you want to get it out and get it rolled out pretty quick and then and then you've got a little bit of time to work with it once it's rolled out so luke's got everything rolled out for me we got the edges all cut in and i broadcast all the flake and then you know we give us with this coating, we're actually using uh, what we call a polyaspartic for a coating. Um, polyaspartics, epoxies, urethanes, they're all different types of coatings and they all have different purposes. Polyaspartics, in my mind, are a little bit better than epoxies as far as uh, you know scratch resistance and holding up to hot tires on the cars and you know, a little bit more as far as durability. So we we tend to like to use polyaspartics. Um, and I, I cover all that in that course too, guys. But so we when we buy our coatings, we, we typically buy polyaspartics and we can use the same product for the base coat and the top coat. We just put, add color into the base coat when we do it. So we, we basically buy one product and use it for both the base coat and the top coat. Whereas you know, if you use just a plain epoxy, you, you could use that for the base coat, but you wouldn't want to use just plain epoxy for the top coat. Epoxies, you know, a lot of them tend to yellow in the sun, so if the sun's shining through these garage doors and you use it as a top coat, that area where the sun hits inside the doors is going to kind of amber or yellow over time, and, and then the rest of it in the back of the garage won't, so it's going to look kind of funny. So this is the base coat, same product, just clear. Uh, also pretty fast drying, and I'm still picking up leaves. <laughs> um, and this is about, you know, after we scrape, we, sc we scrape the flake with those floor scrapers, and that kind of removes all the, uh, helps remove all the excess flake. It kind of helps smoothen out the flake. And then we vacuum it really, really good a couple times. And then we get right to putting the top coat on. In the top coat, you know, this, again, it's a polyaspartic, so it's very, very scratch resistant, hot tire resistant, very durable. Um, this this garage coating right here is going to wear for years and years and years, 15 to 20 years if, if it's maintained properly. We don't, and another thing I want to point out is that, that little knee wall that's about 12 inches high, 10 to 12 inches high. You know, we give the owner an option to do that too. We could do that too and flake all that and make it all look really, really cool. Um, and a lot of them we do do that. This this owner opted not to do that. So if you're wondering, you know, why didn't we do the stem wall? That's why. I mean, a lot of times we do. It's an added cost. I mean, it is quite a bit more work to grind that, make it look really, really nice, and then to flake it. But we do give them that option. We kind of had to shut the doors quite a bit because the wind was really picking up. We wanted to try to keep as many leaves out of the garage as possible. So we closed the doors to finish this up um, as we were getting closer to the doors. And then Luke's getting this rolled out. You can see how really nice that's looking in there. And then I'm outside as Luke's rolling, finishing up that last little piece inside. I'm outside cutting in those edges. You can see we had to put up some boards. Um, even though there's not a ton of leaves outside, whatever leaves were out there were, were finding their way in the garage.
But that's that's basically how Luke and I work together, how two guys do an epoxy flake coat. And this is what it looks like right here when we're done. Uh, fantastic looking floor. The homeowners are, homeowners are really, really happy. So, you know, if you're interested in learning how to do this as a business or you want maybe try to tackle this yourself, check out the course down in the description, guys. Again, I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go down there and hit subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.